Now, one in every five teen have STD. That's 20%. So you see, sex is so rampant in the teenagers. If 20% of the teenagers are having sexually transmitted diseases, so sex is so common. Rates of gonorrhea and chlamydia are higher for teens than in any other age group. What does this indicate? Rates of gonorrhea. This is an important question in exam. Rates of gonorrhea and chlamydia are higher for teens than any other age group. That means compared to a 40-year person or a 50-year person, teenagers will have higher chances of chlamydia and gonorrhea. What does it what does it point to in public health? You have to learn to understand what the data or the situation is pointing at. What it is pointing at? What it is pointing at? If the rate for gonorrhea and chlamydia is higher for teenagers, what it is pointing at? Lack of awareness about, not about sex, but about prevention. If one thing, yeah, it is common in teenagers, that's right. And lack of awareness, not about sex, but about protection. So the teenager wanted to do sex, but were not properly explained or were not very conscious about using condoms and things like that. And they just had unprotected sex. And that is why the, 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 both these diseases can be prevented by condom. So if this disease is spreading, it means less use of condom and less use of sex education. Yeah, sex education is lacking. Now, the problem with sex education is every country has some, some fellows and especially old people who are opposed to this kind of education. In US, in the south of US, you call it the, sometimes they call it the church belt. So you find that you have more Catholics in that area. And somehow with whatever the interpretation of the religion is there, they are opposed to any sex education with the kids. They think that sex education will make the, sex do chi make the child do sex. If you don't tell them about the sex, they will not do sex. So that's the thinking of the conventional people. So they think that don't teach any sex education in the school. Otherwise, the boy or the girl will start doing sex from the next day. And this is leading to more STD, HIV, all these problems, teenage pregnancies. And every country has this kind of problem. If you know in India too, if today you, go, you, you become a doctor and you go to practice in some place, and you say, let me go to students of class 7 and class 8 who are already 12 years old. And let me tell them how to do sex properly and safely. Do you think the parents will be very happy that, okay, some, somebody wants to tell my kids how to do sex properly? What, what, is, what is your opinion? Do you think if you go to the school, you're a doctor, you know, you read everything, and you try to tell the parents that, okay, I'll explain your daughter how to, uh, your son, how to use condom, how to do safe sex, how to do this, how to do that. Do you think they'll be very happy about it? Will the parents be very supportive? They will, they will fund your entire project. What do you think? What is going to happen? What do you think about it? Well, there will be problems. In a lot of cases, the parents will be against it. They will say, you're spoiling my child. They will say that you're spoiling my child. And they'll be against sex education. There'll be a religious group which will oppose you. So this is not easy. This kind of education is not easy. Incidence and then prevalence. So incidence is number of new cases. Prevalence is old plus new cases, total cases. So I can say that, for example, the in example incidence of, let's say, malaria in November 2019 is 10 and total cases is let's say 40. So how many were old cases? First question. And what is the prevalence? So in this case, I say that incidence of malaria is in November 2019 is 10. Now for the same period, how many cases were old cases? And what is the prevalence? So incidence is the number of new cases. And prevalence means old plus new cases. Total cases. Total cases is prevalence. And new cases is incidence. So my question is, based on an example, I said that incidence of malaria in November 2019 is 10. And then I'm asking you a question for the same November 2019. 
how many were old cases and what is the prevalence so this is the two question Pre you say that vikas you said that prevalence is i said how they have two questions how many were old cases here in the same example and what is the prevalence for november 2019 okay let me put it this way total cases so total cases means old plus new incidence total cases is also prevalence incidence which is also new cases is equal to 10 so the if i minus the new cases then the old cases are 30 in this example so how many were old cases then the answer comes out at 30 and what is the prevalence prevalence is total cases so total cases is 40 total cases is 40 so this is the prevalence 40 could you get the example now yes vikas could you get the example now always remember when total cases is the same as prevalence if there is 1000 case of tuberculosis in the month of january 2019 then the prevalence is 1000 and out of 1000 if 100 new cases were added to the pool then the incidence is 100 so the old cases is 1000 minus 100 900 so old cases is always prevalence minus incidence so old cases minus new cases is it clear now this part this is an important concept we need to repeat it often in the discussion incidence and prevalence fine that's nice if it's not clear i can explain again this is an important concept incidence and prevalence so incidence that means when i say incidence new cases highest incidence for std is hpv human papilloma virus and highest prevalence is herpes simplex virus hsv2 so now let me just tell you something briefly about hsv herpes simplex virus though this is not a very clear uh, demarcation but then for majority of cases this is applicable that whenever there is a herpes infection of the upper body whenever there is an infection above the belt it is mostly herpes simplex virus 1 type 1 and whenever it is a genital herpes it is hsv2 a very important question very very important question chlamydia is the most common reported sti for female equally important question gonorrhea is the most common reported disease for male which is the most common reported sti for male gonorrhea which is the most common reported sti for female chlamydia now primary and secondary syphilis is a important reemerging sti so syphilis is reemerging this is a case of syphilis so there is an ulceration on the tip of the penis as you can see and these are some of the clinical signs of the syphilis now cases are on increase why the cases uh, cases are increased we'll see it in some other class not the numbers but you need to know stuff like i'm pointing out the questions you need to know like that when you say herpes simplex virus 1 it is usually above the belt herpes simplex virus 2 below the belt most common std for the woman is chlamydia most common std for the man is gonorrhea highest prevalence of std is for herpes simplex virus type 2 type 2 remember it high herpes simplex virus type 2 highest incidence of sti is with human papilloma virus this this you need to remember this you need to remember nobody is going to ask you um, rates are out more than 20 per 100000 there nobody is going to ask you but the rest of the thing they are going to ask you so numbers are not very important but the trend and whatever the name of the disease which is common or uncommon is important now gonorrhea is a declining sti but then the problem is antibiotic resistance problem today is drug resistance now drug resistance is due to many reasons including overuse overuse of antibiotic emergence of genetically resistant variety now we'll talk of resistance in some other place 
but genetic modification environmental factors including overuse of medication or misuse of the antibiotic is one cause of resistance